My lab has studied the basic mechanisms underlying protein synthesis for almost four decades. Our initial interest in poliomyelitis has expanded to other phenomena, including cancer, autism spectrum disorders, and learning and memory. There are about 20,000 different proteins in each cell of our body. The amount of every protein is very tightly controlled at many levels, including at the process of protein synthesis. Abnormal control can lead to many diseases, including cancer and neurodegenerative ailments. Everybody knows someone in the family, a friend, a co-worker, that is affected by these diseases, which for the majority of them, there is no cure. It is therefore of paramount importance to understand the basic cellular mechanism that is rendered effective in these maladies. One of the proteins which plays a major role in the control of protein synthesis is called EIF4E, for eukaryotic initiation factor 4E. Aberrant cell growth and proliferation, which is a hallmark of cancer cells, is strongly linked to mutations in a number of genes. We discover that is also linked to increased amounts of EIF4E shown in yellow, which leads to exaggerated protein synthesis. We discovered that organisms have evolved mechanisms to control EIF4E activity to safeguard against cancer and other diseases. This control is exercised by a set of proteins known as 4E binding proteins or 4E BPs that block the activity of EIF4E. The 4E BPs are controlled by a protein called mTOR, which stands for Mechanistic Target of Rapamycin. Rapamycin is a drug that was first discovered here in Montreal and used today to treat cancer. In cancer cells, the mTOR becomes hyperactive and impairs the activity of 4-EBPs by adding phosphate groups, which prevent them from blocking EIF4E activity. The net result is more protein synthesis which eventually leads to uncontrolled cell growth and division that is a hallmark of cancer. Today, there are several drugs which inhibit mTOR activity, which are being tested in cancer patients to treat this devastating disease. In 2009, it was reported that two children with autism in unrelated families in Scotland had mutation in the EIF4E gene. We felt therefore compelled to study the role of EIF4E in autism. The requirement of protein synthesis for brain function and learning and memory is well established, but its mechanism of control has not been well understood. My group examined mice from which the gene for the 4 EBPs had been deleted Remarkably, these mice display behaviors reminiscent of autism in humans. This is the result of excess production in the brain of proteins called neuroligins, known to be involved in autism. The autism-like disease in mice is directly caused by EF4 in the brain, since a drug named 4EGI1 that inhibits EF4 reactivity can remedy the autism-like behavior of the mutant mice. As a basic scientist, I am very excited about our findings in mice. But we are all aware that mice are not humans. Whether these kinds of interventions will work in humans requires much more research. Memory is also controlled at the level of protein synthesis, but it was not known how. I was greatly inspired by the work of Nobel laureate Eric Kandel, who discovered in the sea snail Aplysia, a protein which controls memory. The amount of this protein in the brain is modulated by an initiation factor, which is different from EIF4E, that is called EIF2, 
for eukaryotic initiation factor two. This important proteins recruit the amino acid methionine with which protein synthesis starts. When ERF2 is modified through so adding a phosphate group by a protein kinase called GCN2, general protein synthesis is significantly reduced. Remarkably, when we reduce the ability of mice to fully phosphorylate ERF2, the animal showed a significant increase in their special memory. Therefore, we explore the possibility of targeting the phosphorylation of EIF2 as a means to improve memory. Strikingly, mice with a reduced EIF2 phosphorylation demonstrated enhanced synaptic plasticity, spatial learning, memory, and fear conditioning. Our journey began by studying the mechanism that initiates protein synthesis in cell. We could not have imagined that this work could be so incisive for understanding polio disease, cancer, autism, spectrum disorders, as well as learning and memory. The greatest privilege and reward for a basic scientist like myself is that key discoveries through fundamental research are used to drive the treatment of disease.